In this video, guys, we're gonna look at economic calendar tips for FX traders. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so if you're trading FX, you're probably going to be familiar with the economic calendar. The economic calendar is basically a calendar of scheduled economic data releases from different countries. Now, these are basically numbers that uh, look at a variety of different things. We've got the obvious big ones like the interest rate announcements, which will determine the interest rate for that currency. We have things like jobs numbers that come out, like non-farm payrolls, jobless claims, come out in the US, which determine you know, how many people are in employment. Uh, we have CPI, PPI, factory orders, numerous different things coming out from numerous different uh, countries. And that affects, potentially affects, the price of the currency pair that you're trading, depending on which currency pair you're trading, etc. Now, it's important to understand a few things about this economic calendar. Before we get into that, guys, I want to have a shout out to our channel sponsor. We've got a very good economic calendar. If you hit the link and go through and click economic calendar, you'll see it's very nicely laid out. And there's a little decent filtering uh, mechanism in there so you can see which ones are the most uh, potentially market moving, the countries, etc. So we'll look at some of that in a moment. Uh, but it's a good economic calendar to have in, in your bookmark. And these guys are multi-regulated. They're regulated with a variety of different jurisdictions around the world. They can trade FX markets, you can trade indices, you can trade commodities, ETFs, and even crypto for you crypto traders out there. So go check them out. There's a link to them in the description below. It's HYCM. And let's get down to some of the tips for the economic calendar. Okay, so the first thing is filter for your pairs. There's so much data out there. There's so much information and you might not care what is coming out of specific countries and all it does is ends up clogging up your economic calendar so if you filter out for the countries you're interested in i.e the pairs that you're trading if you're trading at udnzd you want australia new zealand uh, but you also will probably want the big ones your us uk eu and japan anything coming out there and china as well probably uh, depending on what you're trading because those will have a genuine impact on other bigger global kind of uh, knock-on effects, which may then well affect secondary, the smaller pairs you're trading. But most people will be trading the bigger pairs, Euro, USD, USD, JPY, etc. And so if you filter out for the countries that are, are, are really are affecting your pair, at least then you're not going to get crowded out with some sort of noise and stuff. So once you've got that sorted out, you can start to then think about how you're going to position or not over the trade. So avoid holding trades over data that are new slash tights. What do I mean by this? So if you've had a swing trade that's been running for multiple weeks, you, you have plenty of cushion there, and you're coming up to data that is relatively low impact, you might well be fine holding it, right? It's probably not gonna have that much impact on the market, or even if it is relatively high impact, you can make the decision, okay, well, even if it you know, surprises, how is it gonna affect me? It's not gonna kill me, all right? You can make that decision. But when I say new or tight, so if you're trading a new position and it's just kind of getting going, you probably don't wanna be holding trades over that because it's a very binary outcome, especially when you're talking about significant data like interest rate announcement. If that's a surprise move against you that's going to dramatically hammer the trade you know so if it's a smaller thing um, you know the people aren't watching so much then it might not move the market at all and you can see what's market moving or what's not uh, it's a calendar uh, you can see the star rated system to see exactly what has potential market moving consequences so if it's new or if it's tight what I mean by tight a it's close to your stop if it's close to your stop or it's close to uh, you know tight for you you're probably better not holding it. If you've got a big cushion, you're happy to take the risk, fine. But it is a binary event. It is a sort of thing that can either make your trade or you know, really hurt you. So you've got to watch out for that one. Another thing is to understand what data is important and what is not. Now, you don't have to be economists to do this. You can just literally look at the filtering system, look at the star rating, uh, look how it's graded and say, okay, that's got a potential high impact. I'm only going to look at that stuff because the low impact stuff is exactly that, guys. Now, it's not to say you can't get a rare event where the low impact is so unusual that it does impact things, but generally speaking, you know, traders are looking at the big stuff. That's the important things that the big levers of the economy, what the job's doing, what the factory order's doing, what the interest rate's doing. These are things that significantly reprice your currency pair up or down. So understand what's important and what's not, and just avoid the stuff that's not. You don't need to 
kind of work out uh, and go into too much deep dive into it. You know, we're traders, not economists. The other thing is to use data as a marker to conduct analysis from. What do I mean by this? So, especially when we have data that's uh, unusual or something different about it, very often we can use that as a marker to then conduct our technical analysis from. So if you're using charting, if you're using charting like MT4, which is offered MT4 and MT5, those kind of platforms, you're probably using charting to make your trading decisions. And so what you may do is go, okay, well at that point, that's when we had the new news, if you like, or the new valuation, if you like, for the currency pair I'm trading. So how do I, how's the market responding that well, it was quite bullish news the markets pushed up oh it's actually quite bullish news the market pushed up for a day but then it's kind of undone all that so you can start to use that as a bit of a an anchor and say okay this changed the potential valuation of the pair that i'm trading how is the price looking in response to that so you can kind of use it and lever it and get a little bit of a view of what's really happening under the bonnet and how bigger traders uh, people are moving money around a positioning the other thing we've got, guys, is plan how you will or won't trade after a major move. So um, there's, you know, really three things that can happen uh, with with yeah, any kind of big announcement. One is that it's very very bullish and the market just rips off. One is it's very bearish, the market just dies to the floor, depending on obviously which pair you're trading. And one is that nothing happens. There's three kind of outcomes. Um, so planning how you will trade from these outcomes helps you not get caught out and not take impulsive trades. And we've all been there, you know, we've taken an impulsive trade, maybe chasing a market, things are super bullish and reverses on you. Uh, you know, it, it can be catastrophic. So if you plan it at least broadly, then you're not gonna get caught out. And many, that plan might well be do not trade, especially if you're day trading, do not trade for the first five, 10 minutes after the announcement. If you're swing trading, don't start a position, etc. But it might also be okay, if we get a surprise move, I'm gonna buy a first pullback. If we get, a bit of a flick to the upside that starts to reverse, I'm gonna fade it and put a stop above the high. Whatever it may be, you know, that's for you to decide based on your risk tolerance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But planning a little bit. Now listen, you might, it's one of these funny things because the amount of times you plan and nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, you're planning for a major move, you've got this setup, nothing ever happens, will be frequent. But at least you are prepared. You know, you're prepared that, hey, all of a sudden, wow, there's a surprise interest rate cut, bang, market goes crazy. What are you gonna do? You know what to do. So having being prepared you know, is key in trading in all spheres of trading, but particularly when you've got economic data coming out that you know can influence the market you're trading. The final thing is understand how key data pauses markets. So what I mean by this is, you know, if there's very key data that everyone's waiting for, everyone's waiting for an interest rate announcement, everyone's waiting to see what the jobs number's gonna be, whatever it is, understand how that tends to pause the market. And what I mean by that is, let's say, the data is in the afternoon, the market may well sit and stagnate all morning waiting for that because people don't want to commit before they've seen data coming out. And if it's really key data, that might even mean the day before is quiet. So that's a little tip for you is that if you start looking for maybe breakout trades the morning before key data, you might well be disappointed because there probably isn't likely to be that much commitment in traders, uh, you know, really pushing some money into the market until the data has come out, until we've seen, you know, the underlying feel of the economy. So again, understanding how it can pause the market, how it pauses the money flow, and maybe adjusting your strategy to suit. Maybe that means staying out of breakouts, or it might mean not even trading at all, or it might mean, okay, I'm gonna look for, you know, short-term mean reversion type trades to kind of pull back to a mean, whatever that may be. But understanding that, you know, bigger players are the ones that are moving the market, and they may well not want to be involved until they've seen exactly what is gonna come out from the Fed, from the jobs number, etc. All right, guys, those are economic calendar tips for FX traders. Don't forget to check out our channel sponsor, the sponsor of this video, which is in the description below, and you go and check out the economic calendar as well. Take care, bye-bye.